Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're finishing off our uh, Derek DLC on the boardwalk. So I won't hold you up. Without further ado, let's head into this. Mm. He asked if I only patted Nicholas's head as he peered up and down the street. Something caught his eye and he lit up. You know, I was so focused before I kind of forgot where we were. This is still the boardwalk. He was excited as he had been towards the beginning of let's the day. Let's go. Want to walk around? There's a lot of interesting stuff here, even if we're only looking. Sure, I feel like strolling, maybe even getting a good saunter on. Derek gave you a thumbs up and then, ah, uh, hmm, that Nicholas. Uh, can you help me move him to my back? It'll be easier for the long haul. You stood up and helped. Uh, it took both of you fumbling around. With effort, you were able to get the little boy comfortably on Derek's back. You then left the bench behind to explore the bustling waterfront park with out consciously deciding to, you gravitated towards the edge of the path close to the sea. You studied the beautiful ocean, your breath almost taken away by how the water sparkled under the last sprinkling sunlight. The evening remained pleasant and warm despite the encroaching darkness. Your skin felt taut under your face paint. The paint had started to crack after its long exposure to the elements. Is it normal for Nicholas to fall asleep like this? Mm -hmm. Kind of. Sometimes something is too exciting that Nicholas bounces off the walls. Just imagine it. By the time he actually gets there, he's already burnt himself out. I'm pretty sure Nicholas didn't sleep at all last night because he knew today was going to be boardwalk day. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that sucks. He miss he's missing this. Will he be upset that he slept through the day when he wakes up? I used to do that when I was little. You nodded understandingly. I did used to do that. Derek grinned and pressed his cheek into Nico's. Uh, your parents should give you a raise. I hope George and Elizabeth are having a good time. I hope Nicholas at least is having good dreams. Stay quiet and continue the observation. Uh, let's hope he's having good dreams. Yeah. I bet he is. Walking down the boardwalk was peaceful. The conversation was easy with occasional giggle. Uh, the other groups of people passed by. Couples, young friend groups, and families with children. To, uh, all bustled. You caught slivers of conversation ranging from mundane to philosophical. Derek glanced at the faces around him, grinning to himself. It kind of feels like we're parents and this is our kid. He twisted around to show you Nicholas with amusement. You're right. Oh yeah, our next trip should be the wedding chapel. Yeah, haha, I'm glad he's not my actual kid. Yeah, you blush not to respond. It'd be nice if that was true. We flirt with him. Oh really, you say that now, but you haven't seen Nicholas Grumpy yet. He turned back, not shying away from your face after that admission. He led you down the boardwalk. You noticed a new skip in his step. Hey, I have an idea. Let's ride the Ferris wheel. We've officially given up on getting uh, our parents, and even Nico can do that. Uh, yeah, that'd be perfect. You're a genius. Uh, how high is it? Is it, <laughs> is it safe? You nodded excitedly. That'd be perfect. Derek lauded a whoop and turned around like it was a little happy dance. You laughed, charmed by his enthusiasm. If you keep that up, you're going to wake up the sleeping dragon there. Even if I did, we'd drag him to the fair, to the wheel anyways. That'd rock him back to sleep. You smiled. Derek had an answer for everything. You both eagerly made your way through the crowd to get in line for the one ride that was an option for you. Derek cautiously weaved past people, making sure no one accidentally bumped into Nicholas on the way. The line was short and didn't take very long for you to start boarding the ride. You piled into the cabin and Derek placed Nicholas in the corner of the metal bench you sat next to him. Nicholas sn uh, snuffed when he was jostled but didn't wake. Derek wrapped his arms around him to secure him from falling forward. Nicholas unconsciously leaned his head over to rest on him. He rested on the bench across from them, eye to eye with Derek. I felt uh, sturdy under you. Derek's grin widened and he tapped his toes together as he waited for the ride to start. And it did. The carriage car rocked forward slowly. You ascended into the sky. You could see the entire expanse of the boardwalk from the cabin. It was amazing. You, uh, it was an amazing sight. From this height, the stalls, all the director decorations looked like magical land of toys. You glanced at Derek, curious if he was enjoying the view too. The sun had continued to sink as the Ferris wheel rose, and the light that reached inside the cabin, uh, uh, through the little window was low. Uh, the sharp edge shadows cut across. Cut across Derek's body. He stopped shuffling his feet and twisted tapping his finger against the top of his knee in a jittery, uneven beat. Why is he so nervous? But look at him. 
You're so cute. Wrong button. Would Nicholas still sound asleep, it felt like you were alone with Derek. He smiled at you in good humor across the way. There was an undercut of that nervousness and shaky of his hand that betrayed it him. In the small space high in the air with no one else around, Derek took the chance to open up to you. So... So, Air, you want to hear something kind of embarrassing about me? Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. Derek clasped and unclasped his hands like he was working over bread dough with the... Bashful whisper of his tone made his secret hard to catch. Well, this sort of thing is kind of like a dream or something that I've got. Bring the Ferris wheel, babysitting necklace, what sort of thing? We wait for him to explain. Derek shifted shyly. His head went low, but his eyes glanced up at you. When Derek spoke again, it was a tiny voice. I, I'm talking about having somebody who's there when stuff like this happens. Your eyebrow shot up, but the rest of your body stayed frozen in place. Derek timidly sank down in his seat. He brushed his little brother's bangs away from his closed eyes. It was a nervous moment, Terry distraction. Nicholas offered him some emotional support just by being there. I like I like thinking about people I love. I really seriously do like doing stuff that makes them happy. I don't want to have to stop doing any of that, even though it's annoying sometimes. Annoying for me and whoever tries to stick with me. He showed an apologetic grin for a moment before his intense earnestness returned. Ah, uh, Derek tightened his hands into a fist know. but i don't want to have to make that better by doing more for myself and less for them what i really want is somebody who's there for me then it'd be even my family cares about me obviously but a lot of the time that's the thing i need help with um with a laugh derek liber liberally trousered the hair of the loved pain in his side who laid there and his brother remained blissfully unaware the trouble he caused. The humor in his tone lay Derek as quickly as it had appeared. He couldn't get away from how serious the topic was or how much it truly meant to him. It'd be cool to have somebody who was on my side who liked me because of me, not because they're family and are supposed to love me. For a single instant, his eyes met yours, but then instantly focused on the world outside, the scuff cloud windows of the old Ferris wheel. You could see a lopsided grin reflect in the glass. Don't tell my bros. I imagine some pretty dumb things. It's not dumb. That's normal and nice. I promise I'll, this will stay between us. You know, you do have that. I'm here for you whenever you need it. I'm sure that dream will come true for you. You smiled reassuringly. I will be there. Ah, ah thanks. The foggy face you couldn't make out in the window pane trembled. He wasn't ready to show directly, but you were glad you were still uh, got a glimpse of it. His grasp, he grasped the top of one knee and took a deep breath through his nose. When he exhaled, he carefully laid out a few more words for consideration. Harry, is there someone that you think... But he never placed that last forget part. Forget it. Never mind, forget it. You can ask me anything if you want to. No, you can't leave it there. You're killing me. Wait, I want to know what you were going to say. It's all right. You can tell me later. I stared at him in confusion. You can ask me anything. Don't worry about that. But thanks, you're great. I was just this idea I've been kicking around, but it should probably think about it a little more. A lot more, besides. Derek shrugged an arm and cocked his head down an extra bit of company who was still gently uh -huh. snoring. It's kind of awkward to talk about all this personal stuff with my baby brother right here, even if he's asleep. He chuckled good-naturedly, moving his hand to scratch behind his ear. Maybe I can try again later. The back of his foot knocked against the lower wall of the outcropping metal seat on repeat. It sounded like sound at the end of the conversation, but that didn't mean nothing else was on his mind. Derek was always considering something, and most of the time it was other people. Things someone else might have missed or forgotten weren't taken for granted by him. Thanks for helping with the snacks before. That piece of appreciation was given easily. The next, though, was far meeker. And thanks and for coming with me. Oh, you're welcome. It was nothing. Thanks for letting me come with you. Anytime, Derek. You gave him the thumbs up. Anytime. This time, Derek shared his bright and bashful face with you directly. You could always count on him. That was a certain. That was a certainty. And Derek knew that the sentiment was mutual. You would look out for him whether he did it for himself or not, whether he asked you to or not, and whether he wanted to or not. That's just as sure. Not much more was said before the ride came to its steadily inevitable end. 
you disembarked from the cabin with Nicholas securely in Derek's arms. He strolled from the exit, uh, the nearest stall, to ask the employee what time it was. It was 8 o'clock p.m. was quickly approaching. We gotta get to the meetup place. Can you help me get Nico on my back again? Uh, how about I care him? No. Uh, let me take a turn with the kid. I can do that. No, oh. let me. Oh! Instinctively, Derek pulled back. He clung tighter to his younger brother, keeping the weight of that burden squarely on himself. He waited for him to calm his table. Ultimately, the tension in his face and hesitancy in his heart faded, and he accepted your offer graciously. That'd actually be great. Thanks, Harry. Derek shifted his grip on Nicholas before he propped the small boy over your shoulders, and you tucked your elbow around Nicholas's knee and hunched over so he wouldn't slip off. Nicholas draped his draped heavily on your back like a fluffy carp uh, pattern cape. He really wasn't that heavy, but you could easily imagine how carrying that extra load could get tiresome after a while. Derek definitely needed a break. Perfect. Together, you wandered across the path. People surrounding you were full of enthusiasm, bustling from ride to ride, store to store, but quite but a quiet peace had settled between you and Derek. Your day at the boardwalk was already coming to an end. The sky had gone completely dark by the time you reached the meeting spot. The world around you was still awash with light. Street lamps bore down on you, while spotlight shot upward to illuminate the biggest rides. You and Derek huddled at the side of the path. You wanted to stay out of the way of visitors who were uh, trickling off to the parking lot and others who were rushing the opposite way for a last minute excursion on the boardwalk. You hoped that the strangers enjoyed themselves, but for you and Derek, plus the sleeping Nicholas, there was nowhere to go, at least not until you caught sight of your currently missing family I members. Figured. We beat them. Good for us, we win. You use the break as an opportunity to readjust Nicholas. He started to slide a bit during the trip over. Since there was only two awake members of the group, you both wordlessly kept your eyes peeled. Every figure approaching in the distance was scrutinized and then disregarded, just as another stranger. The process repeated a few minutes, but eventually two shadow forms coming down the path stopped under a light and immediately recognized them. George Elizabeth! Derek jumped and waved his hands over his head. He was entirely free to draw attention to himself. That w was thanks to you taking over piggyback Nicholas. Even on the other end of the boardwalk, you could tell Elizabeth was smirking. When Derek's brother and your sister joined you in front of their stall, you were proven right. She definitely had a leering smirk. Mm-hmm. Very cute that you're taking a turn with the precious baby. Ha! Derek barked uh, out a laugh. Elizabeth smiled. Uh, wasn't the only notable thing on her face. And even Derek wasn't polite enough to let her get away with it. Maybe, but what that's on your forehead. The oldest kid hadn't returned exactly the same way as you left her. her she now had a bright white golf ball emblazed on her skin with non-toxic water-soluble paint. So much for not needing something like that. After just a small huff, Elizabeth finally laid out her case. George and I talked a little about sports we liked. When I told him I did golf, he suggested I get face paint of that. I did, and it was fun. Her chin was high, and she spoke with defense, defiance. Elizabeth absolutely refused to be embarrassed by her change of mind. George stood at your sister's side and proudly took credit for the accomplishment. <laughs> she didn't want to do it before because she was just being an Elizabeth. <laughs> Huh? Nice try. Uh, better than being uh, a Borge. <laughs> George and Elizabeth chuckled at the quips. Apparently, they had unique nicknames for one another now. It left Derek nearly speechless. Wow. wow. Clearly, you and Derek were the only ones who weren't the only ones who went through a bonding experience this evening. I'm glad you had fun. I feel like I'm being replaced. This is so cute, Elizabeth. This sweet you're getting along. You smiled in relief. Everything went well sweet they're getting along what else did you think would happen you could easily imagine your sister being unable to mesh with a kid like george but someone beat you to the punch when it came to saying that out loud uh that you'd act too good for george and make him sad rude. well that's rude and it didn't happen and that's why it's sweet light-hearted laugh drifted around the group when whether you divided up or altogether swears and pain kids enjoyed each other's company your sister then exhaled calmly and you followed it with a good sage nod. I'd like, I'll take Nicholas now. Oh, uh, whether Derek was going to agree or disagree uh, with that, with the offer, you didn't know. But Elizabeth didn't give him a chance. She wasn't suggesting what she thought she was. We've got like 10 or 15 minutes left to two. You should use it. 
What? What? You want us to leave him with you? Uh-huh. Derek took a hesitant step back and turned his face away. His expression tense is the same way it had when he first realized Nicholas was going to be asleep for the rest of the trip. Nicholas is going to be mad if I'm not there. The resistance was weak, mumbled, and her middle brother spoke with much more boldness. Nicholas isn't going to know, and what he doesn't know won't kill him. George! Derek was at a loss on what had come from <laughs> that where that had come from. You hadn't expected it either. George was never the rule bender. You must have missed even more than you thought during his time with Elizabeth. Derek, let's go for it. Come on. Uh, uh, come on, Bork. Live a little. Uh, Bork. Uh, I don't know. You two are my heroes. We've got to go, Derek. Will there really be time for that before our parents get here? We got to go, Derek. We got to go. See, even your d darling Airy wants you to stop being such a goody two shoes for a single second. Go have fun for Pete's sake. Yeah, hurry. You have to do stuff on the boardwalk or at the boardwalk. He shyly scuffed his sneakers on the ground with a doe-eyed expression that was more expressive for Nicholas. He was, it was exceedingly rare for anyone to tell Derek that the plan was, what the plan was. He was used to coming up with all the ideas and taking charge. Derek glanced at you. It was impossible not to smile at him. All right. All right, let's do it. Then we're doing it. Finally. There was a quick passing of the buck as Elizabeth took Nicholas into her hands. She carefully positioned his head against her shoulder and cradled his legs under her forearm. Uh, then Derek found the hold satisfactory and trusted his younger brother to her the same way he'd let you borrow the responsibility for watching out for George. Uh, no more time was wasted. You shot off down the boardwalk one more time. The flow of traffic had shifted even more from when he started waiting with everybody, expecting for you to move towards the exit. You pushed against the tide into the heart of the park. Your uh, heart were beating hard. Derek shouted, over the sound in breathless, thrilled voice. Lines are going to be short this late, but I don't think we can do two. Which one do you want to do? Or we don't have to go on right at all. Uh, Ferris Definitely. wheel. I think it'd be a fitting way to end the day. Even though through heavy breaths, he spoke sweetly. It is more thrilling than any roller coaster you've been on. You and Derek sped straight to your goal. Uh, you tilted your head back every so often as the towering Ferris wheel got closer as he ran towards it. As Derek had theorized, the line wasn't even half the length it was most of the day, and only took a few minutes before you were on the platform and awaiting your ride. Uh, you hopped in the next private carriage and that wound by in the circle and you took a seat on the hard bench. This time, Derek didn't have the spot opposite to you. Instead, he nestled into the same bench, his fingers curled around the edge as he leaned forward to look out the window. You did the same thing, trying to get the best view you could, and then you were slowly lifted into the sky once more. This peaceful ride, a few words shared, Derek's mood had turned contemplative with you being alone together in the dark cabin. But he was absolutely beaming when you returned to solid ground and left the ride. Derek stared at the sparkling stars beyond the lifting clamor of the boardwalk. There was a piece between you that hadn't been there any other moment of during the trip. Phew. Hey. His eyes had stolen the shine from the cosmos when he placed his gaze back on you. It was way too awkward to talk to you about before with my brother right here. I just want to say I really like hanging out with you, Ari. I love my brothers and parents a ton, and my other friends are great too, but when I have to pick someone to team up with, I think about you. He shrugged his shoulders with a shy grin. Derek was... Someone you could count on for honesty, but sometimes it still surprised you uh, he was what he was capable of. I think of you too. I'd partner with you anytime. You smiled back at him. You flushed and looked away. Thank you. I can't get why you didn't admit that earlier, you joke. You too? I'd partner with you anytime. Oh, cool. Getting the chance to spend some time with truly just the two of you was more than you could have hoped for. You owed Elizabeth one. Despite taking an extra jaunt around the boardwalk you still arrived at the entrance before your parents however there'd been a shift in the group nicholas was awake as soon as derek noticed the small third figure standing by elizabeth and george he started like he was hit with a bullet he made a break for his sibling and you were right behind him uh the motion was not exactly subtle and it caught the attention of the boy in question he let a shout and he saw you rapidly approach well technically it wasn't your arrival that had an impact oh nicholas sprinted away from the meeting spot not uh, willing to wait a single second for the reunion. 
He crashed into Derek, wrapping his arms around his brother's thigh and sticking his head in space between Derek's legs. Oof. It was powerful enough to knock Derek off balance. He had to swing his arms out to the side to stop his wobbling. Once he was sure he wasn't going to topple over, Derek bent down and scooped up his hanger on. Seeing Derek carrying Nicholas felt extremely familiar by this point, considering that he had the case for an entire afternoon, but Derek wasn't sick of it yet. He could handle it for a little longer. Derek nudged his head towards the other two members of your party, encouraging you to come. Together, you and Derek walked the rest of the way of the boardwalk entrance while Nicholas clung onto Derek the whole way. George waved you over. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey. And the moment you were in uh, whispering distance, you were greeted by a hushed message from your own big sister. Good job. She put a finger to her cheek and smirked. Derek slowly kneeled to let Nicholas get down. The little boy stood on his own two feet and the two hands didn't detached they only grasped the hem of Derek's jersey instead uh while brushing his brother's messy hair Derek glanced up at Nico's temporary babysitter and stared at them questioningly what happened was the obvious unspoken question he's only been up a few minutes yeah. and he was really grumpy at first because you weren't there but we got him talking about the dream adventure he had when he was sleeping to keep him busy and that worked it was really funny. Nico had a good time, too. George beamed with pride at the success, and you noticed how much closer he stood to Elizabeth. Your sister accepted his company just as welcomingly. Then their own, they were their own partners in crime for that Hi. day. I'm basically positive that afternoon, about five seconds, he stopped telling us his actual dream, and he was just making it up. But it was cute. Derek blinked at the two as if he had witnessed a miracle. It was kind of in a small way. He was able to pass the mantle of responsibility and everything turned out fine. However, Elizabeth and George would be replacing Derek anytime soon, or likely ever. Nicholas may have behaved for a bit, now, but now that his biggest brother was here, the youngest lad wanted to be taken care of. His gaze dropped to the ground as he pulled at Derek's shirt. Derek, tummy, my tummy hurts. I want an ice cream. No ice cream, Nico. That's not going to help your stomach. But. but you can have some of my snacks. I saved part of it. I saved you part of it. Derek's tone really sold the idea. It was a full of appeal from the fact that it was his snacks. He could hype up the product better than any of the employees running the games on the boardwalk. Nicholas brightened immediately. He clasped his own collar and leaned in his head all the way back to look up at his brother's face from where he stood against Derek's legs. He wasn't kept waiting long. Derek pulled out the baggie from his pocket and shifted through the mix of walnuts and cereal to pick out the treat especially chosen for Nico. Once he collected a small handful, he passed it over to Nicholas. He carefully dropped the round cereal puffs one by one in Nicholas's tiny palm. The amount was almost overflowing. Nicholas gratefully received the offering. He shoved the whole thing into his face and ate directly out of his hand. It reminded you of feeding oats to a pony, except in this case, Nicholas was both the feeder and the fed. Derek nodded in satisfaction and rolled the bag over in his palm. George, these are for you. He gathered the last wayward pieces of cereal, then offered the well-worn bag of nothing but walnuts to the middle child. It's been a really long day and there's still the right bag. You should eat something. George didn't argue with that. He gladly accepted his brother's thoughtful Thank gesture. Thank you. Thanks. George plucked out just one from the pack, the hardiest looking nut in the bunch, and took a bite of it. His gaze shifted towards Elizabeth, or Elizabeth, as George knew her, and he swallowed his snack and then asked a question. Do you want any? Thanks. You know what? I would. Thanks. Elizabeth was the third person who took a turn of opening up a hand to receive a snack. George shook a few of the walnuts into her waiting palm. Derek, you and Ari can have some too. Nicholas' fingers remained pushed against his mouth, but in his distracted chomping, he spoke muffled words fiddled through a handful of hash okay. cereal. I can share too. He stuck his sticky palms up towards Derek's face instead of his own. The gesture had crumbs cascading down his shirt. Nico couldn't reach high enough to get all the way to his brother's mouth. Derek shook with giggles and poked Nicholas's wrist and nudged the pile of soggy cereal away. He had to take a second breath before he could explain himself. 
I've got some of this yo right here. That'll be from you. Thanks, Nicholas. I'm going to eat it. That logic seemed sound for Nicholas. Or maybe just seeing his brother smile made Nicholas smile too. Either way, he accepted that not taking more of the cereal counted as him sharing it. Uh, but he wasn't done. Nicholas turned around on a dime, arms still outstretched, and positioned his hand towards you. Amazingly, he wanted to share uh, some with someone other than Derek. You kids are way too nice. You cooed his sweetness. You smiled with forced politeness. You had no idea how to Rick. Matched Derek and La. You cringed at how gross the snack was. Derek. You knew he was trying to be nice, but it was just hilarious. Before Nicholas could start flinging bits of cereal at you, his eagerness to share a warm voice boomed over the den of the busy boardwalk. Good evening, family and friends. It was Mr. Suarez, and not only him, he spotted all four parents weaving their way through the crowd. We're here. The sight of his mommy and daddy made Nicholas forget all about feeding his pre-chewed snack. Uh, he smashed the remaining cereal into his mouth so he could use both hands to wave at his parents. Dad and mom. Derek called back with equal excitement. The parents picked up the pace to gather around their children, greeting were shared between the adults and kids. Immediately, Ma noted face paint. And that was now adorning your group. Wonderful. You all look wonderful and creative. Nicholas forced himself to swallow the mouthful. It, this was the moment he'd been waiting for. He stuck a huge breath, pointed his cheeks, and cheered. Rainbow! That's good. Why, you're right. It's a rainbow. It's beautiful, Nico. Nicholas uh, giggled gleefully at the praise from the grown-ups. Miss Suarez then clasped her hands together and changed the topic. Well, everyone, I'm sorry you beat us here. Hopefully you weren't waiting too long. This is going to be nah, great. Nah, it was fine. I appreciate it. I appreciate you waiting here for us. And now, and how was the bike ride? You saw us? Uh-huh. Mm, we did. Elizabeth rolled her eyes towards Derek, but uh, didn't say anything else about it. It was lovely. It was lovely. But Such a great way to explore the boardwalk. Returning them was a real hassle. That's why we got here late. Definitely worth it, though. And it was. And did you children have a good day? Nicholas threw his hands in the air to answer with full force. <laughs> yeah. Derek softly patted his little brother's head. His voice was much quieter and distinctly relieved. Yeah. You, George, and Elizabeth nodded and offered your own points of agreement. It might not have gone as you had imagined, but none of you would consider it a waste of time. It was an experience worth That's having. That's great. That's great. I'm sure you made the most of what you had. Uh, but we better get going. Yeah, maybe you should. It's very late. Perhaps we should pick up some dinner on the way home? Absolutely. It's been hours since we left, and Nicholas can always sleep in the car since we won't be home before bedtime either way. All the kids except Nicholas had their faces go completely flat, and Elizabeth snorted. Miss Schwarz didn't miss that instant reaction and raised a brow. Derek straightened the band on his wrist and broke the news to his mom. There was a glint of amusement in his eyes. Sorry, Mom. I don't think that's going to happen. Nicholas remained obvious. Oblivious to the discussion going on about him, he was leaping and bounding from board to board. Completely refreshed, his mother frowned. It was obvious to her what had occurred. Miss Warriors was unflustered. Her, he shared some dignified off. Well then. Well then. I'll, he'll be up to keep us company. True. True. We'll all be together. Those words reached the small ears of the youngest person. There, Nicholas held on to Derek's abdomen like the sound of that promise. His older brother looked down at him wearily. Glad to have you back, Nico. And George, you're such a reliable bro. He wrapped one arm around Nico, late Nicholas, and reached over to pull his brother into a hug. George welcomed and reciprocated the embrace. The Suarez snuggled together in a tight squeeze, and their uh, flaking face paint rubbed off on each other. Your gaze wandered from the public display of affection and went to your oldest sister, Elizabeth, was definitely not a hugger, but you whispered, you, but you whispered your own siblingly appreciation for her. Thank you for being such a reliable sis. She gave a smug flip of her hair. Forget it. I owed you one after your grand stunt for me on Daddy Day. Ah, <laughs> Elizabeth. Let's go. Let's go. That was all that needed to be said. You completed party 
took their final steps on the boardwalk, heading straight towards the parking lot. Miss Warriors leading the pack. Mom, hey mom! Nicholas shouted as uh, he waved to get his mother's attention behind, still using one hand to grip Derek. Guess what? Elizabeth carried me. <laughs> she did. That's so considerate. Elizabeth. Oh. Elizabeth. <laughs> Your moms were walking arm in arm, sharing a hushed commentary with each other's distant from the group, tittering over what they heard. I carried you too when you were sleeping. She only did it for the last few minutes. It was nice of her to do that. You're so sweet, Elizabeth. You snickered at your own moms. Really? Really? And it was longer than Elizabeth did? Wow. Hmm. Hmm. I feel who carried Nicholas the most today should get the biggest say. And what we have My for dinner. Thoughts exactly. I second that. Sounds fair to me. Then we all agree. I guess this means Derek will be our dinner decider for tonight. Maybe. Probably. Uh, Derek scratched at the rainbow on his cheek and chuckled airily. He shrugged without comment and simply continued to walk. His little brother stayed at Derek's side and they bumped along together. You strolled with Elizabeth while the parents surrounded the uh, set of siblings and sat the front and from behind. Derek's hands were full with Nicholas and George, but he uh, snuck a fond glance over at you. None of his excitement had faded. The night still young and bright. You knew you could count on every person there. Despite being miles away from Sunset Bird, you felt right at home. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, remember to hit like and subscribe and come back because we're not done with this game. There's still the whole step three and then step four, which is technically just an epilogue so you'll want to see it right anyway i hope you do come back to see it anyway i hope you have a good day i'll see y'all next time Bye bye <laughs>